Hi and welcome. So in this video I want to turn some basic triads into a decent sounding string arrangement. And especially if you are a new composer you may have run into this problem of going let's say beyond the typical triads. So let's go. Okay so first of all let's take a look at the basic chord progression that would be A minor, G major, E minor and F major and it sounds like this. Okay, so I don't want to get too sophisticated here. So what I did was setting up double bass, cello, viola, violin one and two. And also keep in mind, it depends a little bit on the project you're working on or the mood you want to achieve. So there are many options possible. So this is just one of them. So first let's listen to the standard triad, including the bass. And I have just basically my strings, double bass, cello, viola, violin two and violin one on top. And it sounds like this. Also, if you're curious about the plugins and the sample libraries, I have used Performance Samples Vista for the strings. And as a plugin, a reverb plugin, I have used Simplicity's new reverb plugin Berlin Studio. And all I did was loading a separate instance for each of these sections and then routed them into contrabasses, cello, violas, and so on. Okay, so the first thing I always do when I try to spice up my string arrangement is try to find a little bit of more unusual notes and not just going with a triad. So as you can see here, what I did is moving the third of the A minor chord, the C, up to a D. So basically it becomes an A sus4 chord. And then on the G, I left these two notes, the fourth and the fifth, going. And on that G major chord, the D would be the fifth and the E on top would be the sixth. So it sounds a little bit more interesting and it creates kind of like a little bit of a rub. So let's listen to this. Okay, so as for the E minor chord, we try to leave as many notes as possible untouched. Uh, in a sense, there is a move happening here, but just as a general approach, you can see that we leave the G untouched here and it becomes, or it, it's the third, the G is the third of the E minor chord which was the root of the G major chord before. Then as a next note, we have the fifth. And on top now we have a D, which was running before here, playing before. And this becomes the seventh of E. So it's basically an E minor seven chord. On the next chord, the F, we try to create a little bit of a different tension. Again, you can see that we have the B running and the A and the C would be both chord tones of the F uh, this would be the third and the fifth and we have another fourth running here. So let's listen to this entire thing and how it sounds. So again, we have another nice rub going on here that we can then use to move to whatever place we want. Okay, so the next thing that I did was basically just moving one bass note here. So what I wanted to do is get a little bit more interesting rather than just moving the bass down and up again is introducing uh, the B here, which would be the third of the G major chord and now it sounds like this. So basically the intention here was to create two uplifting moments that when you change from the A to the B and then uh, from the E to the F. Okay, so this step probably contains most changes and it also is the most experimental one to me. I just like to cut up notes and just move them around and see where I can create more tension or how I can resolve things, uh, create more rubs, 
uh, create more beautiful or exciting moments. And as I said in the beginning, it also depends on what project you're working on, what mood you want to achieve. Maybe you already have a melody going on and then you want to be aware if you have like fast moving notes that you probably don't do as much changes in the accompanying instruments or the other way around. If you have a melody that contains some long notes, you want to create some, uh, you know, interesting movements underneath. So let's listen to how this sounds. Okay, so this last step contains two changes. The first one was to cut up the cello notes a little bit more and I try to move around a little bit within the triads. So A minor first chord going from the root to the fifth, then on the G major with a B in the bass, I'm going from the fifth to the root and then to the fourth and because it moves back to the B here, so this would be a nice transition. Then on the E minor here, we have a fifth going into the sixth and this kind of like creates an interesting rub again because we have the second violin also going from the B to the C, but a notch later or actually a half note later. And then on this last final and dense chord, we just fool around with the cello a little bit, playing a little line. Uh, so we just break up and move through this dense chord. And the last step that I did, which is actually the most important one, is to take care of the dynamics. So as you can see here on each of these individual, whoops, on these individual instruments, you can see that I individually recorded some CC1, uh, introducing some dynamics, and the final result sounds like this. So was this video helpful to you? Just let me know in the comments. Also, I would be really happy if you leave me a like or subscribe to my channel, just in case if you haven't already. It would not only mean the world, it would also help my channel to grow and present you more stuff like this. By the way, if you're curious to find another easy method but for brass, make sure to check out this video here. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for checking out this video and see you soon. Thanks.